What's up guys, JS2 Cents here, and I just spent all day testing all these graphics cards from the 1050 non-TI all the way up through the new Titan X Pascal, hitting pretty much every GPU in the stack to find out whether or not bottlenecking is still a thing in 2017. JSU Sense is sponsored by Precision Camera and Video, Texas' largest photographer and video retailer. Located in Austin for over 40 years, their giant 20,000 square foot showroom floor, local workshops, and worldwide shipping are just a few reasons why you should head right now to precision-camera.com. Now the reason why we're even talking about this is because anytime I do a video about lower end CPUs, the conversation of bottlenecking always comes up. And that's something that we haven't heard as much, I don't think, as we moved forward in the in technology since my last video, which was 2013, where I actually used my, my 3770K for that one. If you talk about timing on that anyway, um, I don't think it's become as commonplace of a discussion because CPU technology seemed to move forward at a slower pace than GPU technology, which means that in my mind, actually we could have probably seen more likelihood of bottlenecking as the CPUs slowly progressed and GPUs got balls to the walls fast compared to anything available back in 2013. Like even the 1050, what you get for your money out of the 1050 is way more today than what you would get for 100 bucks or 120 bucks, whatever it is, back in 2013. Now, if you're new to PCs and you have no idea what bottlenecking is, it's basically what it sounds like. It's when you're trying to take something really big and cram it through something really small. I'll let your imagination fill in the gaps. It's when you have a lot of performance potential in your graphics card speaking to your CPU, but the CPU can't handle the information as fast as it needs to to be able to render all of those frames on your monitor. So what you inevitably get is a GPU that's sitting around waiting for the CPU to process the data that's being sent to it, and then you start to get dips and peaks and, and stutters and slowdowns in your gaming experience. Now, in a nutshell, that's what bottlenecking is, but it can be much more detailed and much more um, complicated than that, depending on where you're bottlenecking, why you're bottlenecking. It comes all the way down to what CPU you're running, obviously, the GPUs, and more importantly, the titles that you're playing. Because no matter how I did this test, someone's gonna complain that I did it wrong. Because there's no way to test for every single permeation possible when it comes to hardware and software integration and the way that they work with each other. It might not look like it's bottlenecking much on one title. Then you put in another title and it's just an entirely different result. So for the sake of simplicity today, I just use superposition. We're using the 1080p medium because the idea is by not cranking the settings, we're offloading as much of the stress onto the CPU as possible because the GPU is just running away with performance and it's the CPU's job to handle it. So that's how we're trying to introduce bottlenecking in our test here. But like I said, I tested with the 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, and the new Titan X Pascal. The, the newer new one, because there's a couple of them. It's the newest one, that's all that matters. But I did it with the G4560 Pentium CPU, which is like an $80 CPU. And then I also did it with my i5-7600 on a Z270 motherboard. The Pentium was using the H110M like we used in the budget build. So we've got two completely different systems there in terms of spec with the same exact GPUs being used on both systems to try and determine where the bottlenecking actually starts. Now, before we talk about the results, I'm gonna go ahead and show you those right now. I'll be the first to admit that my predictions were actually inaccurate. I, I thought we were gonna start seeing bottlenecking sooner, somewhere around the GTX 1070, where the 1070 would be the last GPU that we saw performance matching, and then the 1080 was where we'd start to see some deviation in performance, but I was wrong. The 1080 on the G4560 gave us the exact same score and exact same FPS as the i5-7600K. Uh, it, was, it wasn't until we went to the 1080 Ti that we saw things start to run away. Now that's actually a good thing because that shows us that even a modern low end, like entry level CPU is able to handle all the way up to something like a GTX 1080, which is the 10, if we compare the performance delta between the 1080 today and what was the 80 series in 2013, which, which was what the 680 might transition to the 780. There's so much more performance today to where that means that you could build a pretty good system out of something like the Pentium chip, as long as the titles, again, you're playing, are not extremely CPU dependent. Because what's gonna happen in real titles and not synthetic benchmarks is you're gonna see a lot of things happening where the CPU is having to load textures and it's having to load maps and other players and game data. And then you'll start to see your performance change quite a bit, uh, obviously depending on what the CPU is having to do besides just the FPS the GPU is running at it. So that's why I say that there's no test I could have done today that would have been, you know, appeased all of the crowd. But what I will do today is I will do this. I've actually got 
the i5 uh, 7600K right now set to two cores. It's a two core CPU. There's no hyper threading on the i5, right? So it's a two core CPU. That means there's two less threads than we saw with the Pentium chip. And I'm gonna go ahead and run Superposition now. And we still have the Titan XP installed right here. And we're gonna see what kind of a performance difference we get when we take two whole cores out of the equation. So technically now we have two less threads in the Pentium chip. So I'm gonna let this run and we'll compare the score to see how much it actually affected uh, something like the i5. Now the test is getting ready to finish right here and you're gonna notice quite a bit of up and down in terms of GPU usage when we look at MSI Afterburner. Uh, but the score is undoubtedly going to be different. I mean, we introduced bottlenecking. So we got a 20,355 when previously we got 21,993. So we dropped 1,600 points and our, max F, our average FPS went from 164.5 FPS to uh, 152.25, but that's still super impressive to me because it shows what the IPCs or instructions for clock are actually able to achieve on modern CPUs. Back in the day, if I, if I did this test with an i5 from 2013 and disabled half of it, I'm not even sure the test would have run. I mean, it, it's possible it wouldn't have even run. Now, something else I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you why even though on synthetics, you know, it, it, you can see the variance here, why in games, it's more than just about how much you're bottlenecking your GPU, it's about how much you're just bottlenecking the entire processable, processable, processing capability of your system because of the fact that you have to account for more than just your GPU, right? The CPU still has to run the game. It still has to handle everything happening in the game on top of the visual process that the GPU is adding to the experience. So if we go into like Rise of the Tomb Raider here, and even on DX12, which that API is designed specifically to try and alleviate some of the overhead with asynchronous compute on uh, when it comes to games and allow lower spec hardware to be able to have a better gaming experience. I mean, we've, ex we've really stretched out the capabilities of DX12 here, right? Two cores, no hyper threading, and a Titan XP. I really hope nobody's running this config out there. But what you're gonna see right now, and the reason why I'm still talking is I'm buying time to show you what the load is like, because we're still running a Samsung 850 Evo SSD. So read write is not our bottleneck here either, because that's another possible bottleneck, right? Hard drive versus SSD, read write makes your computer feel slow because the CPU is waiting for your hard drive to send the information. It's the same thing, just a different perspective where the CPU would be normally waiting for your GPU. But I mean, we're still loading. We're still loading right now. This is crazy. So now if I say start benchmark, check this out. In fact, I'm, I might even just have to stopwatch this or something, do a jump cut because it's gonna take a while now to get through this test. It's gonna take us a, a bit. So it just started, okay? And the FPS is actually not that bad, but look at the GPU usage. 62%, 65, 64, that is a bottleneck because now that the CPU is having to hand, handle other things besides just the GPU, like in the synthetic benchmark, you can see here that the GPU is not being fully utilized. The easiest way to determine whether or not you're bottlenecking your GPU is to load a free program like MSI Afterburner, put on the uh, OSD or the on-screen display, and then you can actually monitor what's happening here. And this number specifically is our GPU. And now that we're loading screens here, this is the part that takes a little while. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my stopwatch. So that was 15.6 seconds plus roughly the 10 seconds before I got this going. So about 25 seconds between scenes. As the kid goes by with a skateboard, is that loud? Can you hear it? Yeah. This new mic, I got a new mic. It's good, but bad. It's good because it sounds great. It's bad because it picks up everything. Your CPU is more important than just how much F FPS you're losing from your graphics card because of bottlenecking. Bottlenecking is a big picture thing. And that's why I really hate that the way that the bottlenecking terminology is thrown around specifically in, you're gonna be bottlenecking that GPU with that CPU. It's like, you're gonna be really just bottlenecking your entire experience. I wonder how many times I can say bottlenecking in this video before people lose their shit. I hate that term, I hate bottlenecking. Come on, come on. A few moments later, oh, there we go. So it just started and it's like two minutes and like 49 seconds or 50 seconds. It took me a couple seconds to stop it, but almost three minutes to load that transition. The crazy part is all the sound already played and now the video is going without the sound. It like completely unsynced itself. Unsynced, I didn't say in sync. That was a terrible band in the 90s or group. I don't even call them a band. They didn't play instruments. 
All right, so our overall score was 106.82 FPS. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm gonna go into the BIOS, I'm gonna turn that, those two cores back on and run the test again. So 106.82, can you remember that? All right, so active cores are now set to all. And now we can get moving again. Do you see the difference in FPS though? If you look at the other one, remember it was at like 70 FPS, 80 FPS, I mean, look, look at the FPS. If you guys are wondering how strong that Titan XP is, it's not even overclocked. 200, it's a stupid, it's stupid. But look, more importantly though, look at the GPU usage now though. We're sitting up at what, 98%, 99%, and that's just where it's gonna stay. That's just where our is gonna stay. See that, I mean, how fast it loads. But this is an issue though, where we were probably below the specs required by this game. I believe a quad core is uh, recommended and required for this game. It's like, I mean, two, two cores. It's just, it's cool and all. It still did well once the scene loaded and stuff, but yeah. I mean, you see how much faster that went before that? That's the one that took two, almost three minutes to load. It was like, what, 10 seconds? All right, here we go. So 184.91. FPS versus the previous test, which was a 106.82 is what I believe it was. So there was your real world scenario test with bottlenecking. Again, I know folks will be like, well, that's synthetic. It's not, it's on a rail, but it's still using the game engine, whatever. So I think the real takeaway from today's video though, is that modern CPUs, even the budget CPUs are still pretty impressive on how far we could actually get down the stack before we introduced any real slowdown and bottlenecking. Uh, the 1080 Ti was where it was. So somewhere really between the 1080 and 1080 Ti, like if there was a gap, even, but like a card in between there, that's probably the cusp of where we were starting to see the problem. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's gonna run a Pentium CPU with a Titan X or a Titan 1080 Ti anyway. Even a 1080, no, it's not gonna happen. I think something like a 1060, maybe a 1070. So if you're gonna be, if you're worried about bottlenecking, just don't go completely mismatched on your hardware and you're gonna be perfectly fine. Same goes for like the AMD stuff. Um, maybe not so much the Athlon though, but again, that's a that's from a core back in that 2012, 2013 era, which is why we saw some of those problems. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching today's video. These topics are always fun. And remember, they're requested by you guys, so go and check it out. Also, too, remember, you can buy merch, not this merch. I, I This isn't my store, right? This is this is Kyle's. I wear this shirt, even though it's too big for me. It's like, a, it's like I'm wearing a blanket because he hates that I wear this shirt. He tells me to burn it every time he sees me wear it. He's still awesome sauce as far as I'm concerned. He ain't no bitwit. You're awesome sauce. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.